Today on Timescast, North and South Korea exchange artillery fire and U.S. officials consider the next steps to contain North Korea. American companies have their most profitable quarter ever, so why does unemployment remain high? And News Corp invests in an iPad-only newspaper. It seems like, in a way, Rupert Murdoch is, uh, is making a decision here that the tablets are the new printing presses, yeah? The Korean Peninsula is on high alert after an artillery exchange. Two South Korean soldiers were killed when North Korea fired shells into a South Korean island. Was this a deliberate provocation by Pyongyang? It's hard to know exactly why the North Koreans unleashed this deadly barrage on the South, but one theory is that there were no consequences the last time they mounted an attack in the spring, when a North Korean submarine is believed to have sunk a South Korean warship, killing 46 sailors. The issue went to the United Nations. There was a vague statement trying to condemn the North, but in fact there was no real price paid. That creates a difficult problem for President Obama now. He advised the South to hold its fire back in the spring. Now, if the same advice holds, there is the risk that the North could come to the conclusion that this series of provocations, which may well be set up to establish Kim Jong-un, the 25-year-old heir apparent to the leadership of the country as a military leader, uh, could go on without any real consequences. So the president's choice, risk escalation, perhaps in a way that no one could control, or demonstrate that the U.S. has very little leverage over the North's activities. New numbers from the U.S. Commerce Department show record-breaking corporate profits this quarter. Catherine, the view from the corner office and the view from the street corner these days about the economy, I mean, they couldn't be farther apart. We've got a lot of people out of work right. and so forth. And yet we have new figures today showing that corporate profits are higher than they've ever been. This has been going on for a while, actually, that corporate profits have been growing for the last seven quarters at a breakneck pace. As you said, in this past quarter, in the third quarter of this year, they were at their highest level ever recorded um, in the last 60 years. And are we all just working harder? It's a combination of different factors. Um, some of it is just that we've seen such rapid productivity growth, and that means that companies are able to do more with less, which can help them with their profit margins, of course. Uh, some of it has to do with the fact that company, American companies are increasingly doing business abroad. So even though the domestic market may not be great, if there's strong growth in India, in China, in Brazil, which there has been, um, companies in the United States might be able to take advantage of that and, and do more of their business there and bring revenues in from, from abroad. I mean, how much of a buffer do we have here? I mean, can the rest of the world continue to sustain this kind of pace for us? Exports did go up um, in the last quarter, uh, and that certainly helps GDP. You know, Obama has said that he wants exports to double in the next few years. He just came back from a trip to Asia where he said that he was trying to help uh, sort of grease the wheels for more American companies to be able to expand abroad in these emerging markets. But there's also a question of how much of, the, of those expanding markets will actually benefit the typical American worker, because it's possible, for example, that you know an IBM might be ex might might find more customers in India, but might also do a lot of the uh, production work in India as well. David Carr and Brian Stelter explore Rupert Murdoch's iPad-only newspaper, expected in 2011. David, what are you doing? Brian, I'm reading a newspaper. It says here that Rupert Murdoch is starting yet another newspaper. No trucks, no printing presses involved called The Daily. Murdoch setting out, trying to create something wholly different for the iPad. Why do you think he's going after the iPad in this way? Well, Brian, the iPad is a wonderful graphic environment for almost anything, including, yes, your good old-fashioned newspaper <laughs> fits in here. Pretty, pretty nicely. nicely. It yeah. becomes pretty spicy when you put it on here. That's the sort of consumer side of it. The business side of it is newspapers have had a really hard time getting people to buy subscriptions on the web. But when you're on an iPad, you're in an app kingdom, a place where people pay for content all the time. Yeah. And News Corporation has decided they're going to use all these folks to come up with a daily newspaper product. Yeah, something, lots of video, lots of rich media. Uh, it seems like, in a way, Rupert Murdoch is, uh, is making a decision here that the tablets are the new printing presses, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's a good theory of the case. There's a few barriers to it. How do 100 people make 
a product that's interesting yeah. enough every and single day to make. scope. Yeah. Yes, there's also the question of whether people who've grown up on the web are interested in having a group of newspaper editors and reporters decide what their news is. And we're willing to pay for that also. Might you be have one to of the big stories of the next year or so. Exactly, but you have to agree it's, it's an interesting muscle for media to be flexing. Join us again tomorrow for Timescast.